All right, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to today's training, uh, document control. Uh, from where we stopped yesterday, um, we stopped at a, a document register, and I gave us an assignment to, you know, to create this, just as it's um, just as it's been displayed on the screen, to create this uh, document register. So, um, is there any any um, particular place you want clarification, engineer? So I can just uh, throw more lights. If not, tell me to proceed. Uh, actually, I can see that um, some of these things they have. If I'm correct, I can see that they have. Um, seems they have some formulas in it. Uh, not really, not really, not really uh, formulas. Not really formulas. You can decide to create okay, formula. So. That means if you if you want to go advanced, you can decide to create formulas. But the way it is like this, that's the way it is. That's the way you've seen it. Okay, this sir. is created based on specification of client's demand. Right? If it is okay, your if it is, if it is your company, your company has a way, a control measure, how the um you know standard um, um, um control system, you know, as relates to document controlling. So they have the company might have their own. So if you're working on a project for clients, clients will tell you, this is what I want you to do. So you do it based on the specification on the contract document. So that is just that. You can decide to code it if you want to code it. So it makes it easy for you. But this is just what it is. You look at the specification um, um, of the contract document. Then you start um, pulling out all these information from the contract document and how to number. Uh, like I said, every company has their different way of numbering um, you know, uh, documents based on specification You know, from from the client side but if it is internally of course as a document controller you should be able to come up with something i haven't understand um i mean document control procedure you should be able to come up with something and then um, you know save your company for for i mean from stress to easily track your documents and also record the documents you know in a safe uh, um, um, manner all right so i proceed so we stopped that document register yesterday and um uh let me just hit a little bit so, so these are the metrics you see in document register. I said document register. Uh, this is this is used to enter uh, information into the log sheets for proper documentation, easy tracking. Know that your document register easy to enter. Uh, I mean, you you log um, um proper documentation and easy tracking and for um easy traceability to trace your documents. You know those documents just like what you have here. This. All this rule you're seeing here, these are documents. You can trace it via the document number. Like I said, every company has their own. There's, there's um, other, one, other document register I will bring that is very, you know, um, very simple. Unlike you can be able to, but as long as you follow the due process of document control, you can be able to know what it entails. There is no big deal about that, about this. So like I said, you create document register for easy tracking, to log in the document sheets for easy traceability, and also, uh, document register is used um, in and outgoing. Is used to control in and outgoing um, um, documents, inflow and outflow of document from start to finish of that project. You should know that. For example, we have the master deliverable register for document drawing. So I told us um, deliverable is different from um, document. What um, deliverable is like what I explained yesterday. Deliverable uh, is the expected um, end product, end result. Deliverable. End results that is expected from from each stakeholders that you know that the clients or the stakeholders involved are expecting captured in the document, right? So that is just just like this um, document um, document controlling the, the the let's say the projects we're talking about here is document control, and then um, that document control the deliverable as regards to that document control is this document here. The information is the deliverable, so the document here is PDF, and this information is captured in PDF. Uh, that's just what it is. So one one of the metrics, most of the metrics metrics you look at for in your document register, look at document number, document number, document title, then the revision number, and then you talk about the uh, current status. I'll walk us through on this. I'll walk on through, I'll walk us through on this on this uh, revision number and also status, but just take notes that these are what you'll be seeing. These are what you you will see in your document register. In fact, you have to create it uh -huh, based on specification from clients. So this is the status date. So status date of that deliverable, whatever it is. So discipline, 
you put discipline and then type responsible um, um originator. So the originator, the initials of the originator, then um, transmit um, transmitter number. Right, everything is being captured in your document and return code. So, so this is the document. This is the register that you use to log in every document that has been transmitted to the client. You log in the the document um, uh, transmitter number, majorly captured in this document, and that transmitter number is what is carrying all the documents you you transmitted. All the document is is listed in the transmitter sheet. All the documents you trans you transfer to your clients or any stakeholders involved in that project are captured in the transmitter sheets. So that transmitter sheet is what displays everything as regards to document that has been sent out, right? And that that transmitter sheet will be captured in your um it, okay it will be captured in your document register as well as also the document you know involved. So we we'll, we we'll get to that. The document involved and also the transmitter sheet that you know the document uh, I mean was, was used to send out. We we'll get that um, pretty much. So so this is transmitter sheets. So transmitter sheet. This is cover notes that accompanies a document when it is being transmitted. Like I told you, so transmitter sheet is a document you know uh, that accompanies um, document that accompanies a um, um, document when it is being transmitted. Right, just like if you go, if you go for, if you go for, if you go to buy any particular thing, electronics or whatever, they will give you receipt. That receipt, consider that receipt to be a transmitter sheet. That is just the truth. Consider because that receipt captures what, what um you you've already bought, captures the date, capture the you know the amount. That is just what transmitter sheet is all about, right? So if you are buying laptop. That laptop, your, your, um, the receipts will capture the laptop, the, the model of the laptop, the amount of the laptop, the type of the laptop. So the dates when you bought it, everything, and your name, you buying it, and you will sign. So that's how transmitter sheet is. When you issue document out, you issue transmitter sheet so that at least, you know, it will capture the document as a whole, you know, uh, as regards to that uh, um, project. A project so that is just uh, that on that note then um okay so in that transmitter sheet you have your just like similar to what we have in our document in our uh, mdr uh, sorry yeah in our mdr similar to what we have in our mdr we have the same matrix also applies in the transmitter sheet so we have here document type two the title of the document you know we get to see that then talk about the document number talk about the revision number talk about the um revision number also revision set could depend revision, revision, i mean revision uh, status sorry revision number revision status right if you want to put that revision status is even it's even more important also the status of that um deliverable uh, being uh, sent being sent out so talking about um description of the documents right so um those are the sorry sorry sir <laughs> sorry sir okay I've seen something. I've seen something like a document that had revision number and it also had version number. What's the difference, sir? Version number. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, um, that's the well. There are two different things. Version number and then um, revision number has to do with the um, if it is if it is um R R one. I'll I'll bring that to. I mean, I'll bring that. So uh, notice as we keep proceeding. I'm just showing us these are the metrics you look at. So the version number has to do with the the particular document, right? If it is um, you can decide to call it PDF one one two, depend, or it can be maybe sheets. How many sheets? How many sheets do you have captured? I mean, like let's say a particular document have different sheets. Sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. You can decide to say version whatever it is. Version two version three of that's a particular document i don't know if you understand yes sir, i get mm -hmm. you sir. so version version one if it is maybe if it has if the document has about um, three sheets you can say version three of that particular delivery version three of let me just see for instance transmitter sheet 
version three of transmitter sheet. We just assume that transmitter sheet is a project. Is it? I mean, is the is the um document tied to? So version three of transmitter sheet, and that transmitter sheet has about three different pages. So you you can decide to call that version version three. That means the page three. I don't know if you get that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And also the revision um number. So the revision number also asks, also is different from um the version um you know number. So we'll get to see that, but just take note of this uh, metrics. These are the things you're going to be seeing. These are things you will see, or if you want to create one, these are things you should take note of, add in your transmitter sheet and also add in your document um, register. So, so that is just that. So also you, you have an um, issue status, right? Issue status has to do with issue for, um, issue for testing, issue for um, construction, approved for construction, you know, that is just that, depending on the client's formats, just like what I said, depending on the clients, like I said, clients will give you formats. What they they want you to solve problem for them, and they tell you because you guys need to synchronize together. That means they will they will give you templates how to work, you know, so that at least if if, if a particular document has been issued to them, they can be able to trace it to their own M because they have the same MDR that you have. So if you are sending any um, document out with a transmitter number. It also they also register it in their MDR. So should in case there's any issue, they'll be able to cross-check to see if everything is synchronized. If what you have is the same thing with what they have. So as you push document out, eh, as you push document out, they register it, they have the same transmitter sheet, they have the same document um, master document register that you have. So they they'll cross-check to see if everything is going because your your the, the reason for having this um numbering document is because. You need to have a reference point of okay, fine. This is what happened in social social project. This is from the this is what all the process and all the progress of that project should be captured in the document. So document is just for, for reference in case there's any uh, 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 issue. Uh, I mean, there's, if there's any issue. You can be able to defend based on what you have, you know, as a proof. So that is just that you don't just do project without having taking record. So you take record of everything, every progress and every document that has. That, um, that has been issued out. And also you have the senders and signature, right? The sender signature should be there. If you're the one sending, your signature will be captured in that transmitter sheet. Of course, you are the document controller. Your, you should, your signature will be, be captured there. And also receiver signature. The document controller that is receiving the documents, you know, like I said, transmitter sheet captures all the documents, you know, that you're sending out. It's like a receipt. So if you're sending it also, the receiver, the document controller of the client, also signature will be, you know, will be um, will be added in that transmitter sheet, just like your own, also because you are communicating with document controller. Like I mentioned earlier yesterday, I said document controller. I, I mean, a discipline engineer does not have any right to interfere with document controller of the clients. You only have the right to if you want any information, you you talk to your document controller, the discipline engineer of the contractor. You talk to the document controller in internally so your document controller internally does the work is document controller is a, is the middleman right is the middleman where communication is being um, transferred tra transfer communication to your document contract and your document controller and internally push it to your to the document controller of the client the same thing like likewise it happens to the um, also to the client the discipline engineers in the client does not have rights to communicate with the discipline engineers in the except it is done back end fine but officially they, they, they communicate to the to the client i mean to the uh, client's document controller if you are a discipline engineer and working for the client you communicate to your document controller in your internally to reach to to pass message to whatever whoever um, you want to pass message whoever discipline want to pass message to via your document controller to the contractors and uh, document controller so that is how it's done so you have your receiver signature and also the client name, the client name also will be there. If it is total, total that project, of course you have to put total. Your stand total, and also the name of the projects, uh, very important. Also the dates for pushing out that document, the date for pushing out that document. If the transmitter, if sorry, if the um, document controller of the contract, sorry, of the client is sending you document, he or she will have to capture the dates that that document is being sent out to you. 
likewise you the same thing if you are pushing out documents to the to the uh, client for review right you also will capture the dates and once you capture the dates all this information you're seeing here you go and register all this information in your mdr all this information you register it in your in your master deliverable register so that is a proof to show that yes so, so, so document has been sent out in case you're looking for those, those, those documents you can easily come to track it via the um, um revision number or document number right uh, on document type two you can track it with this document type two and document number no matter how cumbersome the documents are in that project because of course you know engineering document engineering documents are cumbersome in terms of um you know delivering um quality uh workflow they are cumbersome so that's you sometimes you have thousands of documents millions of documents so the only way to and the good thing is this it is you see every project is are unique and each of your document number also will be unique so i'll teach us how to go about that um each of your document number will be those are the things the title is there but the numbers unique right so the number document number are all unique that is just that then the contract number like i said the contract number you look at um the the uh, contract documents you pick the contract everything is being captured in the contract documents you see it based on how the client wants you to formulate or create um these tools that you'll be using on day to day uh, to achieve your tax you know so that is just that on that note any question any question any question i was out for a minute but i would I would watch from the video i was just out no problem. okay so this is a transmitter sheet. Like I said, I said, for instance, transmitter sheets, look at the Z, X, Z, Y, oil and gas, Nigeria Limited, right? So then um, building projects, that's the name of the project, transmitter sheets. Then you look at uh, from, so, 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 from, so, 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 it's coming from this company, you know, coming from Santos Engineering Limited, for instance. That, 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 that means your, you are working, let's say you're working with, you're working with St. Santuzi Engineering um, and Nigeria Limited. So the document is coming from your company going to XYZ Oil and Gas Limited, right? And you put their, their logo. Look at their logo in your right hand side. Why your your own logo? You are you are the contractor. Your logo, your logo will be in your left hand. Why their own logo? Why the contractors um sort of the client's logo will be in the right hand side? Then the name. Your name as a document controller let's say okoro ibe right come let me so your name as a document controller like i said to be captured your name that means the sender so your name will be captured address you know address of your company will be captured the address of the xyz oil and gas so you're sending it to Ike Okechuku. Ike, let's assume that Ike Okechuku is the document controller in um, XYZ uh, Oil and Gas Nigeria Limited. So you're sending this to this um, person as a document controller. Like I said, you communicate with the document controller of the, of the clients directly to transfer message or transfer information. So that's that. Then the transmitter number, very important. These are the transmitter number based on the specification and um, giving to you, in your, to your company, you know, based on the specification in the contract document, you'll be able to know how to draft, uh, know how to draft transmitter number. You will see everything in the specification, how to how to come about uh, this number. You know, you have your TSI, that's transmitter, you know, transmitter, and TSI, blah, blah. You have some code here based on what the specification, like I said, every company has their own, they have their own format. You know, in which they 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 want they want the clients to follow the same procedure so that they can synchronize with them, right? So that is just that. So we have here transmitter and documents have been delivered by. So if it is email, you tick it email. You know, you, this year email. You know, so the transmitter doc, the, the document have been delivered through email. You attach it in your email and send. Acknowledge receipt signature. So. The signature of um, whoever is the whoever is receiving it, the okay, okay, chuku, okay, chuku, um, Ike, will, will, will um, you will attach his signature, you know, 
his signature will be there and also the dates that you're sending it of course these things are going to be you know are going to be uh, you're going to i mean collect it from the document controller of the client and put the signature there then the dates whenever you send it if it is um let's say today now today is 6 or 14 you add 6 or 14 and put the signature there right so you send it so that is just that so that is just that on that so here we are pleased to deliver to your company the following documents prior to be sent these documents have been checked as per contract requirements you see now information contract requirements information include uh, included in this uh, transmitter transmitter for each document is in accordance with the document itself so those are the things you see in your transmitter sheet like i said document number revision number uh and you have the status you have the revision dates you know revision dates the dates the the document is being sent out then you have the title of the document the title of this document is plan view for instance so this is plan view so and that plan view is civil document so and again the type of the document is drawing so you have dro draw and the number of page just like you talked about version number so version you can decide to put version number as same page right so we have your one page you can decide to put version number or page so one just one and then we have here issued by issued by you your signature will be, i mean you're issued by your uh whatever your name is you put it there issued by sad right issued by you know then checked by you know that's it good whoever whoever is a um, review the document also uh, name will be uh, in. We, we have to be, you know, uh, we have to be in the transmitter um, uh, sheets. Also approved by whoever is approving it, you know, if it is your MD that is approving it, of course you have to put the name of your MD. Sometimes signature has to be there, but I will show us a better um, transmitter sheet maybe tomorrow. We have to then where we we'll see all those things, all these things to be very very pretty easy. Yeah, because like I said, every company has different way. So this one might be a little bit tricky. But just have that in mind that this is just what you see in your transmitter sheets based on your specification from the client. So you create this thing and then you relate to your clients, uh, you know, you know, to synchronize um, things, you know, in like terms. So that is just that. So this is what we have here in your transmitter sheet. So any question? Any question? Hello, sir. None for me. Okay. So I'm gonna today. I'm gonna try and I'm, I'm, I'm hasting up so that tomorrow I'm sure some other things again, which is very very important. Uh, so now after like I said, we have three tools that we use in working. Then this is the last. This one is just basically for internal use. You can decide to create it. You can decide not to create it. But it is good to have a good system in place as a document controller. This one you use it internally. So this visual matrix, this is a log sheet table that is created for the logging in of information and to whom certain documents received should be distributed to various parties involved who um, really need um, to be to review, comment, or approve the uh, approve of the project. So this one is internally. So whether the document is meant for. You capture it here. If it is civil guy, I mean, you just capture it. If it is civil, just like what we have here. If it is civil, electrical, um, the document is just like what we have here. So let's say this document now, plan view is meant for civil. You you cross it here times. This document is for civil. Then, you know, if it is for electrical, also the same thing. That's how it is. So that's just what this place entails. We have um, left, left side elevation. Is, um, we have for civil, we have for electrical, and then um, we have for HVAC. These are these are um, uh, discipline, telecom. So these are discipline, civil discipline, uh, electrical discipline, uh, uh, mechanical HVAC. You know, so that is just that on this distribution matrix. Distribution matrix is just internally. You can decide to create it. It is good when you have something like this, right? You can be able to track whatever progress you have internally eh, as regards to the projects that you people are working on so you have here um 
We have here, these are just the document number, it's architect. This is just architect, right? Architect. Then we have the document number. These numbers here are based on the um, um, contract documents. I mean, these are based on the contract document, um, you know, workflow. So you look these things, this how you generate these things are based on the contract documents. You look at what 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 the what the client actually wants you out, what wants you to do based on how to number their documents so that you can we both can synchronize, you know, with each other without any flaws or flops, just like that. So that's just it. So we have, here we have here, these are the num the document type two. Yes, these are document type two, right? These are the disciplines involved. These are the document number right so that is just uh that's if you look at it you will see the document uh tied to you look at it you see the document number and then um, this is just for architectural architectural architecture so so this is for electrical and um that is just it like i said this is for internal use it's not for the clients the one that is meant for the client is your transmitter sheets and your MDRs, because at the end of the project, or sometimes the client might ask you to send the MDR to see if if you guys are in the same page, if what is captured in your MDR is the same thing as what he or she has as as um, regards to the project, you know, in in their own MDR. And so those ones are being you can transfer, but this one is mainly for internal use to how to cross check whatever document that is meant for each discipline to control it internally. So that is just that on this transmitter, on this uh, distribution matrix. Like I said, it's compulsory, sometimes my not. So we are moving to the third phase um, of uh, document and control. This is the last phase. Like I told us, we have three phases. The, the first phase is to put the standard in place. The second phase is um, day to day activities. And, and like I said, your day to day activities, you need your, your MDR to work, to keep document, to keep tracking of documents. To keep registering document, to keep um, you know keep document control measure in place, and also you need your transmitter sheet as a receipt or evidence to show that so 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 document has been issued out, and of course it will capture the date and time and whoever is sending out and um, whoever is pushing their document out like you, your name will be there, your signature will be there, dates you're pushing it out. Those are for evidence uh, purpose. You keep those things as evidence so that at least at the end of the project you'll be able to cross check if anything is missing. So the, the last phase of document control proced um, procedure is um, preparing and issuing of final documentation package. You know, like I told us, as a document control also, you do courier service. And this particular one, this final documentation package, sometimes the contract documents will, will from the client will, will ask you, so, sorry, will tax you people, your tax company, to prepare and print out every document, irrespective of how... Um, Cumbersome, the, no, the, the, the number of documents are, you, your company has to print it. That means add copy. And also soft copy should be put in flash. These are things that are captured in the contract document and you must follow those things and procedures. So this is the last phase, you know. Um, like some document controllers, what they do, they inherit, they inherit, of course, they inherit projects. If you are starting from a, from a scratch, that's when you need to, um, you need to, um, take part in the first phase. In the first phase, like I said, putting document control measure in place. That means looking at the contract document, what it entails, then start formulating what the client wants you to, you know, to formulate based on their requirements in the contract document. So you follow that. If you're, if you are going to a company, maybe you inherit any, you inherit that position uh, based on project has already been, I mean, project is ongoing. Of course, the former document controller might have would have created all these things in place. So you use those tools to work day to day. But it's good. You know how to create it based on the first phase. You know how to do these things. So that in case they have new projects, you won't be confused. You can be able to do these things uh, on your own, looking at the contract document and then, you know, um, 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 format and what they want the client wants you to, to do. So that's just that. So prepare an issuing of final documentation package. Now let's look at this. Uh, so, phase three, preparing an issue of the final documentation package. At the end of the project, the document controller from the contractor side will now prepare the final documentation package, which is the comp compilation of all approved documents. You see now, all approved documents and reports, right? Because as document controller, you keep all these things for reference purpose. You keep all this information. You keep them. 
So you, you prepare final document, compile everything that has been approved and documented for uh, uh, document and report to be submitted to the client at the end of the project, both in hard copy that is embinded in folders. So hard copy, you, you have to buy folders. Normal, after you print everything, you put them in folders. Come in, let me accept somebody. Sir, I also have a question, sir. Please go ahead. For example, okay. if I am an HOD of a unit, okay. and um, I created a document, okay. I checked the document, okay. or someone in my team created the document, okay. I checked the document, I now moved it to top management for approval. Okay. When do they code that document? Is it after the approval they are to code that document, or immediately the document is being created? Immediately the document is being created. That's why you have a um, revision circle. The document goes through revision phase, through um revision phase, revision circle. You have number one, IDC, that's interdisciplinary check. That's when, like I said, that's when you need your distribution matrix is internally. Internally, distribution matrix, IDC, you know, that's that's that that means interdisciplinary. Then the second phase is um um IFR issue for review. That means when documents get to that status of issue for review, you know that uh of course when you get to that status of issue for review, you know that it's it's the document will be pushed to the client for review. If there is comments on it, let's say IFR one, eh. IFR, then the initial should be R, 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 then you add R1, that's IFR. If the client comments on the document that's C, we people need to add social so, so, so thing in this document. If the document controller from the client side send it to you, if that document is going out again, the document is going out under IFR, IFR R2, until... If the document come back with comments again, the document will go out again. IFR, R, that same document to R3. But if the document succeeded in that first phase, maybe IFR, uh, R1, the next phase is your approval, issue for approval. So the document will move to that stage, to the next circle, which is IFA, issue for approval. So once it moves to issue, the reason why you're doing all this, the reason why this status uh, is very very important is because those documents need to go through those stages because you don't want you don't want to commit blunder in your project. So these review stages are the stages whereby the client will review these documents so that once it gets to issue for construction, you know that there's no going back again. That means that document that has been issued for construction is what the construction is what they will use to construct that project. Like I said, the the projects, the deliverables are those things, those ideas as regards to those projects captured in the documents. That deliverables are those ideas as regards to that project captured in the document. So if you move to that construction stage, there's no going back. If it moves to that, if he, if the document moves to IF uh, um approved for construction, right? That is AFC. That means if it goes, if it comes back with comment, it will be C C2. If it goes again, come back with comment C3 until it exceeds that limit of um you know uh, 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 revision. So if the a client finally approves it, now that means that document, if it enters C3, that means that document is now finally approved for construction on C3. So the previous circle will not be will be con will consider them. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, you leave those previous circle. The previous circle will not be used to construct that project. It is the latest latest inversion of that um, document that will be used. Then the engineer, site engineers, people on the site on the on the site. They will now use this document to start doing the construction. I don't know if you understand. So it is from the beginning. So that's why that revision circle is very important. It is from the beginning. Is there any confusion? Hello? No confusion, sir. Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. But, um, you know, when you are saying IFR, IFC, approved for construction, a lot of people that are not into construction, that is just, maybe it's a policy document we want to create. You know, things like that. So. A policy document. 
Uh, well, like I like I said, if it's policy document, you have to um, make a research as regards to whatever you want to do to get whatever you. If if it, are you talking about internally or to the clients? Well, we are doing internally. Internally, internally. You know, when it's now approved, we can keep sending to and clients. Have, and, uh, internally, that's, internally is IDC. And the client, like I said, the client, everything the client will give you is captured in their contract document. That contract document is what you will follow. They want you to follow a particular, that is what you follow. You don't bring out, so long as you're working with the client, you cannot formulate anything yourself. The client will give you what they want you to do. So you follow, like I said, every company has their own way of not bringing their documents. So, but you have to follow the direction of the client based on the contract documents. That is just on that note. If it is internally, you can come up with something. You can come up with something. So long as you understand what you're doing and you can explain to your company that this is what this on this stage, this is what it is in your internal you. But if it is with the client, it is this one I'm teaching you guys now is standard. That is what you use. That is what you use. And it is standard. Is it clear? Yes, please. Mm, okay. So, like I said, the this is the final documentation package. Right, this is the last phase. So, um, so uh, the last phase here does a um, final document package as preparing and issuing of uh, the final document and documentation package at the end of the project. The document controller from the contractor side, let's say you, you are a contractor, you are the contractor side, will now prepare the final documentation package, which is the compilation of all approved documents and reports to be submitted to the client at the end of the project. But in hard copy that will be binded in folders you print all these things you go to in printing a, a printing and press they for them to print all these documents no matter the uh the no, no matter the, the numbers of the documents the, sometimes it can be millions of documents you will print everything because that is that is what the clients wanted to do that is captured in the contract document that you must print this thing at the end of every at the end of the project so both in hard copies like i said and also soft copies saved in cds right you also bond this document in CDs, right? Bond this document in CDs. The soft copy is produced by burning the soft copy into a DVD plate, which uh, would be achieved, right? Which would be um, archived for for five years. I think mean, sorry, fifteen years. Sorry, will be archived for fifteen years, and that and um, that of the hard copy for ten years. Both the company and the um, and the client. So once these things are done, your company. Will have to keep this document, whatever, in their EDMS. You know, I thought about EDMS. That will be very, very safe. Keep it there for 15 years, so that if anything happens to this document, in the um, from uh, in the uh, if the client receives the document, if whatever happens to it, they, they can, if they lost whatever they lost, lost their lost um if something happened, maybe they have to take a leave. They can come to you people and like that's the 15 year agreement too. So if you can, you will still produce this document. As regards to that project, to the client, all these things are captured in the contract document. So, whatever you, you your company is doing, you should have a, a central control server that is very very secure and safe, so that this document will be kept there. All the projects that you have been working on will be kept there, so that in any in any uh, point in time that the client will come, ah, please will give us so 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 documents. We have an issue, with, um, you know, with our own um, server, blah blah blah. You, your company need to provide this document just like it is captured here. Your company, you give them the hard copy. But then the, the hard copy, you might not have it. You just print and give to them because that cost is involved in this one. So you just print and give to them. But you keep the soft copy either in the cloud or in the flash drive. Of your company need to have that in place. And you as a document controller need to know that. So you keep it safe, should in case... Like I said, the reason for controlling documents is for reference purpose. You can't just embark on a project and start, you know, uh, executing projects without keeping record of what has been done on each day. It it, it won't be it won't be it won't be good because if ISO comes, you will fail the you fail the auditing um, you fail that that uh, auditing aspect. So if you come to audit, you will fail it, and you are not going to be satisfied satisfied based on ISO standard of you know. Uh, controlling um, uh, 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 documents. So that is just that on that note. Then the client reps, which include the document controllers and the quality assurance and quality control personnel, supervise and ensure that 
the packages are prepared according to the specification because this specification is captured in the document in the um contract documents how they want you to do it based on you are not doing things on your own there is a way clients want you to do it so you follow the specification every company have their own specification this is how i want you to you would have a problem you know that this problem this is if if the solution comes you should be able to know that the solution is the best for this problem but you don't know how to bring the solution so they now contact they now contact uh, your company as a solution provider to provide solution as regards to the subject matter as regards to their projects so you now provide solution but you must follow their specification right based on that contract document to give them what they want right if you are if you are doing the right thing the client will know that you're doing the right thing listen the client does not does not know how to solve the solve uh, a problem but you the, the the contractor know how to solve because you're a, pro, you're a solution provider you solve the problem but then you will follow specification to solve the problem for the client so that is just that so like i said the qa qs and Q, qaqc personnel supervise and ensures that the package are prepared according to specification so that's just that then about five sets of folders and three cds are being prepared depending on the contracts so like i said depending on the contract they can tell you to give us three three four depend on the contra uh, contracts right depend on the contract about five sets of folders five sets of folders capturing that document uh, that uh, project you know the doc project documents will be prepared you know depending on the contract and also three cds so that is just that then it should also be noted that the contractor stands to to lose about 15% uh, of the whole contract if not properly prepared and submitted so you don't want uh, this this to happen to your company you don't want this to happen to your company so it's if you don't do this you lose you lose you know what that is 15% of whatever it is that that they contracted that's a whole lot so if you don't prepare this you lose 50% of the contract if not properly prepared and submitted so you must prepare this thing according to specifications based on the contract document uh -huh. like i said contract is binded by law and you should not break the you should not um, break the law of the contract so that at least there will be peace the reason why you're keeping those documents keeping and um, taking of those documents is because of reference should should in case there's issue you're able to defend defend your company that this is what this is what i've been done and this is what I, just like that that's just the reason for keeping um taking note of these documents and then registering them so that is just that so like i said i said if it is it should also be noted that the contractor stands the contractor stands to lose about 15 percent of the whole contract if not properly prepared and submitted so meanwhile we the clients also supervise the final documentation to avoid mistake so the client also supervise it however like we also, like we have here specification you follow specification of the contract document you follow specification of contract document then the client also supervises so that there won't be mistake if there's mistake this it depends on the contract so on contract will tell you 20% so they will tell you 10% so they will tell you 5% this is a this is so huge so you don't want to mess with this so you have to do the, do things in the right uh, uh right way or right manner so i haven't said that um so this is just um so we are done with the document controlling but this, this what i want to give us now is just extra so we're done with the document controlling so by tomorrow i will show us a a, a more flexible document um uh uh register and also transmitter sheets um the mat this raw mat this raw matrix you can do that yourself it depends on what your depend on internal discussion you can do that yourself it's very pretty easy from what we have here so you just come up with something, you know, come up with something, document number, document title, based on whatever it is internally to control your document internally, not for the client. The only one that's meant for the client is the uh, MDR, master document register or master delivery register or the transmitter sheet. So that is just that. So we are done with the third phase. However, let me just give us a um, Jara, which is a project phase. The project phase in the projects using building and pro projects as an example, initiation phase. Then the, the owner decides on the type of size of building based on the following factors landscape and uh, fund availability tastes etc so the owner decides whatever based on the following what factors based on the landscape uh, example we're having using a um, 
a building project as an example. So this landscape for uh, font uh, availability, taste of the project, and also whatever etc. etc. Then here we have basic engineering uh, slash front end design fees. So we have the feed. The feed is the um, front end design fees. So this is basic engineering BE. So involves less detailed drawing. So the basic the feed involves less detailed uh, drawings and calculations, right? The feed is just to prepare us for the for the DED for the detailed engineering drawing, right? So involves less detailed drawings and calculations. Example is the architectural drawing for building. That's the less detail. It doesn't capture all the detail. It's just less detail. It can be summary of um um of the basic um can be summary of the of whatever it is that you, you want to produce as regards to that building project building project right so produce the building drawing considering the following location and position of the room sometimes you have to go you have to your company need to send your you, as document controller you're not the one doing this one your company will send the discipline engineer to go and check the sites and whatever do some measurements then later on the the discipline engineer in charge will now give a report based on this you know to prepare his documents based on based on his findings as regard to that location eh? location whatever it is landscape and them um, that is just that so like we have here say produce building drawing considering the following location and position of the room and size of the room uh access air ventilation these are just the things you produce the, you, this is not for document controller but it is good to you that um you are a project personnel you should be able to know this right this is not for document controller but whatever the the the, the um the discipline engineer produce as regards to the reports from site visiting he or she will send it to you right you create a document number based on client specification and tie it to this so the state the, the 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 phase of this project is um, initiation phase which is has to do with the the feed the front end engineering fees no much detail is captured so that's just that on that note then we go to the de which is detail engineering phase ded detail engineering design or detail engineering phase de right so this involves um, a lot of software analysis calculations this is where work works are uh, work work are done here a lot of works have been you know done in this phase a lot of things it's that's why they call it detail you need to be detailed no missing out anything detail document controller this is not your job but it is good to have understanding of what this entails right so should in case your discipline engineer starts sending you documents you should know that oh this is what this is meant for this is what this meant. But it is not your job but it's good to have understanding of what this is uh what this entails so in, this involves lots of software analysis calculations notes and very detailed drawing detailed drawing of that project of building projects of that building project whatever it is it can be two story can be ultra modern building so detailed drawing of that project will be captured so aside that also we have a construction installation fees so after the dd the construction installation phase like i said is when that's um when your your document has been sent for approval approved for construction now the the site engineers will now use that document that have been approved for construction to start constructing what has been captured in that document do not start constructing what has been captured in that document so that is that's why this we have this phase construction fees sometimes your company can be contracted this con, can be given this scope also contra um, to construct sometimes your company will just be giving just the dm um, the front end and the ded then the construction fees they'll give it to another company to construct for them sometimes it might be your company so construction the construct uh, uh, construct the building according to the drawings produced in both the uh, BE, the basic engineering and the DE stages. So you construct it based on this, based on the basic engineering phase, which is the front end engineering and also the DED, detail engineering stage. So that is that on that note. So that is that on that note. Any question? Any question? Any question? Any question? No question for me, sir. Okay. So, if no question, then I move ahead. So, this is just the document revision circle. Like I told us, initiation phase, mostly internal uh, internal by owner slash client 
uh, so in client internal team. Then the basic um, engineering design fees. We have the IFR issue for review slash IFC issue for construction, which is IFR issue for review. The comments, if it comes with comments, it will be one. Like I told us, if this IFR comes with comments, it will be IFR one. Remember, when you're sending it out, it's just IFR without no comments, without no number. But once it comes back from the clients and they have comments therein, when you watch, when the document is going out again, to go to go out under IFR 1.0. That is how it is. Until it pass, until it's past this phase of IFR, if the contractor, if the client accepts you know, the document says, okay, fine, this document is okay. You should move to the issue, progress. The next progress is IFA, issue for approval. Right? Issue for approval. So that is just that. Issue for approval will now be uh, 2.0. If it come back with comments, 2.1. If it come back to another comment under this stage, if it come back with another, another comment, 2.2. That means... The document has gone out two times without a uh, final approval. If you come back to give it another comment, 2.3. Some some specifications might, di might be different. Like I said, your contract document, uh, your, your contract documents depend on what the client wants you to do. Sometimes they might just see they might use A here instead of instead of numbers. So it depends on what they want you to do. But the document control procedure are all the same thing generally, but depend on what the specifications entails in the contract document, that's what you will produce. Then you have an um, issue for design. So this is IFD, issue for design fees. That's a three. That design, issue for design or uh, approved for construction, AFD, um, AFC. Right? So th this is just for the, this one is for the basic engineering fees. That's when you use all these um, uh, metrics. You use the IFR or IFC, you know, issue for uh, construction, issue for comments, sorry. Issue for comments. That's the IFC or issue for review. So comments. So that's the document goes through goes through that means to you know to have comments from the clients. So after this phase, then the next phase is detail engineering phase. Detail engineering phase. That's when you have your IFR, IFA, and AFC. So remember, in the last phase of the um, basic engineering, we, we just have IFD. It is not um, AFC. IFD does issue for detail engineering fees that means this this document now should go should um, be issued for detail engineering the work the detail um um the detail uh, as regards to that project should now be produced so that is what that means after that phase now send that document to you know detail engineering phase on that detail engineering phase now you have issue for approval it will not go to another stage the reason why you're doing this you are, you are keeping all this record because to have reference, reference point, this is where this project started from. This project has a reference based strategy in case there is any issue. You'll be able to defend your company, you'll be able to defend your company with every with every evidence. It's just an evidence to keep evidence of what you are. I mean, I mean, as regards to the project or what you guys are doing. So that is that. So, like I said, the IFA now issue for approval. If if you're when you are this is the second stage. If you are issuing document for approval, it should be that's two. Some company will say B. Some company will say, will say B. Some company will say, you understand? A can be just one. A, one point, A point, A point zero. Some company will just say B point zero. That if you see that B, it also means that IFA. So company, their yeah, issue for construction is C. So, but some companies prefer numbers. C. So that's just how it is. So once it goes out for in this stage IFA, which is two, if it come back with comments, if it come back with comments, that means you will send the same document. That same document will be will be issued for approval again under IFA two point one. If it come back with comment again, it will be issued for approval under IFA two point two until it exceed and complete until there's no more issue as regards to that document. Then you can now progress to IF to AFC, which is approved for construction, right? So if it come back with comments under the approved for construction, what you now do 
if you come back for a comment, if you come if you come back with comments, what you now do is 3.1. If it come back with if you issue there again, you come back with another comment to be 3.2 until the document has no issue or no comments from the client side. That's when it can now be progressed to construction and installation phase. That means construction and installation phase. There we have the we have the issue for review, comments, issue for uh, approval, right? The same, the same, the same steps that approve for construction, the same step, right? So as built, of course, you know what as built is after everything has been done, you just say uh, have that drawing as it has been built. That's what as built means. As it has been built, the rework, the three, the, the rework as regards to that project. In, in in real time will be you know we we'll have an as built drawing right on that on that construction and solution phase so that is that's on that note then document revision updates uh i've already explained this one so when return comments from clients at r 1.0 is reviewed with comments contractor should reissue as r 1.1 i've already explained this right so if approved with comments contractor should progress to 2.0 if approved with comments that means if review with comment that means if they commented on the document you you have no right to progress to to ifa right you have no right to progress to ifa issue for approval you move you keep sending that document until it's exceed until it is um approved with with no comments that is just what that means so I've already explained this. So also the IFA status, the same thing happens to IFC status. I've already explained this. The same thing happened to the AFC status. So that is just that on that note. Do I have any other thing again? Um, okay. So the job scope of um document controller. The job scope of the document con document controller is in two points of view from the contractor's point of view and from the client's point of view, right? So the, the contractor. We have a document controller. Why the clients have a document controller? The reason why to synchronize workflow should in case there's any mismanagement of documents, they should be able to, to see if to see where the problem is coming from. So that is just that on that note. Okay. This is just a backup slide. Um so job scope of document controller. General later will give us this and we'll read about it and then that's so. So we have your practical interview questions uh as regards to document controlling and um comments and observation when you know i'll give us this just read it in our own challenges and mistakes challenges encountered by document controller include the following so you will see, you see all these things here uh conclusion document control is all document control is all to do with the management of information in most projects information comes in the form of documents which might be drawings specifications, plans, uh, metal statements, or even samples, and are received at a central point. That central point, like I said, EDMS, right? So that's just that. So on construction project, this is often referred to as document control, right? Department and, and, and documents control center on a larger project, although it is uh, increasing, increasingly trendy to use um, the terms information man manager and information management center so once reviewed documents are registered they are basic detail noted in a database on a spreadsheet which is your um, mdr or even hand handwritten onto distribution onto distribution sheets or into logbooks so lack of uh, effective document control is very bad uh, for a project and leads to the downfall of the firm you see that so why document control is very very important so that is just that uh what do we have here sample of documents uh documentation guideline prepared by lead um document controller lead dc document controller so when i give us this you just look at this um you just look at this on your own you just look at this on your own mm, just look at this so this is what transmitter um transmitter sheets this is how transmitter sheet looks like so transfer sheet looks like so logo of um contractor's logo the project title the name of the company should be captured here name of the sorry name of the 
clients or their logo, then you have a um, reference and um, preview slash contract reference. If there is any, then um, these are the things to be captured. But all these things are remember all these things, all this information you're seeing here will be captured in the document contract document. So you 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 drag it out, you 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 pull it out from the contract document, and you know use it to create this based on the specification from the client. So that is just that on that note. So the project is currently under leadership of blah, 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 blah. Whatever it's leadership of whoever it is, your your MD. or So that's just what it is. So engineering team, construction, something. So that this is just what um, MDR looks like. Then the, the doc, and document type two um, should be captured here. Document type two should be captured here. Then um, approve for, this is the code like approved code approved for with, with comments depend but some companies have different way of creating their own um transmitter sheets so just for instance now this is a summary of change these are the documents um some of the some of change document that have been issued out based on this level on 3030 that's approved for construction then this is the date then approved for construction and they issued by whoever is issuing it then received by reviewed by sorry whoever is reviewing the documents in your company then approved by your boss needs to approve the document before you send out or your md the same thing happens in this all these stages so that is just how document transmitter looks like so um i will give us another assignment okay let me just quickly do this if for so where is the standard where is the best position to put your document control code. I see some people they put it beneath. I see some people they put it top right corner. Where is the standard? Oh, you can put it. You can put it. You can put it up. Up is very good. You can put it up here. Document control. Then the the contracts. You know, but you can put it up, right? You can put the You put it up. That's the best. If you like, put it down. But depend on what the contract or depend on what the client wants you to do. But if that one is not specified, you can put it up. Just put your document title, the contact number, the document um, control code, whatever it is. You put it up. Everything should be captured up. Some companies don't even bother about that uh, to put the code. They just, you know, like I said, different for, different company with different pattern and different ways of, um, you know, creating a um, document control procedure based on client specification. You are not doing this irrespective of having this knowledge now. You're not doing it because you have the, you have the knowledge as a guidance to guide you. If contract comes, you should be able to look at what the client wants, specification in the contract document, and produce what they want. That's the reason for this class, this training, to produce what they want so that you, can, you guys can be in the same, um, you know, the same workflow and uh, the same line. So that's just that on that. Let me look at this A4 drawing templates. So this is just the drawing. Uh, this is not your job, but this is just uh um from your discipline engineer but, sir, can you help us with a procedure or a process like some of us that want to initiate this process as best best um, standard want to tell our organizations to be doing it as best standard can you give us a sample procedure or processor so we can align okay Pretty much, the procedure is what I have just taught you. The procedure is if you want, you can decide, like um, setting a document procedure. You can decide to create whatever it is. Doc, you can decide to number your document based on information you have from this training. You can number the document if it is a um, safety document. You can decide to say the, the your company. You can decide to create your the safety document Nigeria. What um. Then PMT, that's project management, uh, uh, PMT, project management. Then a particular uh, number, again, 001. So if you see that PM, um, SFT, that is safety, that's the code, SFT, Nigeria. Then the location, Lagos. If you are in Lagos, Lagos. Let me do something. Um, let me do something. Uh, let me do something.
Okay. Let me just do something. Let's say, for instance, give me any give me any name of documents, any document that you're working with. Okay. For example, records of um, um, people that have collected safety PPE. Okay. So, if you have something like this, safety PPE, you can start to, to put it this way. Um, NG, document number. This is the document title. For instance, title, then number. You can start to number it based on the, based on what you've, um, based on what I've um, taught you people, taught you guys. You can start to use that format. Document number can be NG Nigeria, and your comp your where is it located? Your company if it's located in Port Harcourt, You put PH. You can Lagos, Lagos, LG, Lagos. The document uh, name is a um, record of uh, safety. S record of safety, right? Then um, PPE. Then um, PMT, of course, project management, or let's okay, let's use this um, document controller or PMT first, PMT project management, then BCC, then um, you can decide to give this um, number 001. So, this whenever you come across this, whenever you come across this number, you should know that this is what you're talking about. This is all the record. This, of course, this is a document that captures the record of safety PPE. So this is the number for it now. So if you can decide to put it, to add this, let's say 1,000, if you want, right? So that's just on that note. You can decide to leave it there uh, to 001 or zero, whatever it is you want. So whenever anybody comes across this doc, this number, he or she should know that this is the record of safety PP. This number, this is the document number. That is, this is document number for this title and um, document record of records of safety PP. Do you understand? So that is how you formulate it based on what I've taught you guys. You can now use that you know that principle to initiate this process. And you know whenever anybody comes across this document, they should be able to know. Or later on, you 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 have to orientate, give them orientation that this document is for this. Of course, when they see it, the number and then um, the the number and the title of the document, they will be able to know that oh, fine, this is for. When they see um, a PPE, they know that it's for safety PPE. That's what that's that's just it is unique. That's just how it is. Any question again? So that's just what it is. Do you have any question? Hello? Any question? Question. No question for me. Okay. So I hope this is very, very clear now. So this is how you generate yes, based on internal. This is uh, maybe internally. Internal uh, control. This is just internal. If the client, the client, if the if, if the client wants you to do, um, wants to number the document, they will give you specification in the contract document. You now follow, follow what the client wants you to do. The first and this thing should be Nigeria, and the abbreviation should be NG. Then the second will be the location, yeah, um, whatever. And sometimes again, you might decide to put your company name. They'll tell you put your company name. The third one is your the name of document. Uh, then so the, yeah name of document so that's just it they can start to, to put your company name if your company you, does lagos um you can start to put if it is um chevron you can just put s s s v depend on the abbreviation uh, your company decide right so this is just what it is then when you see rs that's record record of safety then the ppe 
record of safety PPE, PMT, project management, then the document controller, document control, then oh, so this is just the this is just what it is. You can this is based on internal process uh, and control measure, right? It's based on internal process control measure. That is just what it is. Any question? Any question? Oh, engineer. Mm. No Wait, question. Um, no question. But please, would mind if you would send us the this slides later also? Yes, I will do that. I will do that. I will do that. So this brings me to the end of uh, to this um, to this um, training. Uh, thank you very much for being part of ASPOC. Thank you so much.